Game hackers have existed since the dawn of video games, and ever since then, hackers and anti-cheat developers have been in an arms race, constantly trying to outsmart the other party. A few years ago, things were rather simple. Read and write process memory worked like a charm for almost any video game, but these days, the same cannot be said. Most large competitive video games have begun employing kernel level anti-cheats. These programs run in the most privileged position possible on your computer, and they can monitor almost everything you do. At the core of every operating system, you'll find a kernel. This is a collection of programs that are responsible for making your computer function. Your computer is a physical object at the end of the day, and your operating system is responsible for making that object a platform for software to run on. When you're playing video games or browsing the internet, you're operating in a space that we call user mode. The applications that you use on a day-to-day -day basis have very little control over your operating system as a whole. When you run a program, the kernel will allocate resources and create a sandboxed environment for your applications to run in. This means that if something goes wrong, the application can safely crash and be restarted. The same cannot be said for the kernel though. Programs that run in the kernel are known as drivers, and every driver shares the same memory space. When something goes wrong in a kernel driver, you get an excellent blue screen of death. Your entire operating system crashes. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. In my opinion, becoming a programmer is a matter of learning how to solve problems, and that's precisely why I partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant is an online problem-solving platform dedicated to teaching you how to think in a fun and interactive way. Their courses are bite-sized and to the point, with a massive focus on visual and interactive assets to support your understanding. Brilliant offers thousands of excellently curated lessons on a broad selection of topics, ranging from programming in Python to literal astrophysics. I decided to take some time and go through their course on search engines because that's a topic I'm not very familiar with and I must say I now have a new appreciation for the complexity of these programs. Not to mention this course had me answering multiple choice questions and even messing around with their own search engine examples. So whether you're a student looking to ace your exams or a professional looking to upskill you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash CAS, or by clicking on the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening, and let's get back to the video. When you want to run a user mode application, the operating system allocates virtual memory for that application to use. To the application, the memory is as real as it gets, but the operating system is actually creating a virtualized environment, not only to prevent blue screens, but also for security reasons. By giving each application its own piece of virtual memory, none of them can access one another unless you go through the kernel. When you want to cheat, mod, or exploit simple games without anti-cheats, the process is quite simple. You can use the Windows API to loop through processes on your computer to find your target application. You can then gain a handle to the process by calling open process, and once you have a handle, you can use read and write process memory to modify the game's memory and do your hacks. There's a glaring issue with this process though. To conceptualize this problem, you must understand that when you call a Windows API function, that function makes something called a system call, which is an instruction to the kernel of the operating system. Remember, your game and your hacks are running in user mode. You are calling Windows API functions from user mode, and those functions are sending requests to the kernel. The Windows API is public and very well understood. Therefore, it's very easy for kernel anti-cheats running at extremely high privilege levels to monitor all of your Windows API calls. The reason you need a kernel driver for hacking games is so that you can circumvent the usage of the Windows API. This is extremely important because kernel anti-cheats can monitor and block usage of the Windows API very, very easily, and they do. Kernel anti-cheats do not let you call read and write process memory on their games. It's very simple. The only way to get around this is by creating your own versions of read and write process memory so that the anti-cheat cannot easily monitor what you're trying to do. The first thing to understand when getting into kernel development is that drivers are basically useless by themselves. A driver comes in a package with a user mode application. Drivers are designed in an event-like fashion. They sit dormant most of the time, only performing actions when a request has been received from user mode. There are many ways of 
of achieving communication between user mode and kernel mode, each with their own pros and cons. Sometimes you don't even need communication depending on what you're trying to do. If you're brand new to this, it might help you to check out IOCTL communication, but in the long term, it's not a great option because it's quite easy to detect as it is so common. Another popular method of communication is through sockets, as this is how kernel debugging works anyway. The problem with sockets is that they are rather slow, at least when compared to my favorite method of communication, a data pointer hook. Data pointer hooks are by no means perfect, but they certainly get the job done, at least for me. I'll leave some resources down below for you to check out if you're interested. To get started with driver development, you're going to need Visual Studio, and I recommend their latest version, which is 2022. Once you have Visual Studio, make sure to install the C++ desktop development module, as Windows drivers are usually programmed in C or C++. You also need to go into the individual components tab and install the Spectre mitigated libraries for the platform you're going to be building drivers on. Finally, you're going to install the Windows driver kit, or WDK for short, link down below, because Visual Studio cannot build drivers by default. This will install an extension that allows Visual Studio to work with drivers. If everything went well, you should be able to create a kernel mode driver framework driver. Earlier I mentioned that when something goes wrong in a driver, the whole operating system crashes, resulting in a blue screen of death. It would be impossible to make drivers if your computer crashed every single time you made a mistake. So there are two main solutions to this problem. Either you need a, another computer to test the driver on, or you need a virtual machine. If you opt for the latter virtual machine route, I'd like to recommend VMware specifically VMware Player, because it's quite lightweight and simple. But best of all, it's completely free for non-commercial personal use. You can download safe and free copies of Windows 10 and 11 directly from Microsoft. You should get a disk image file with an ISO extension, which you can load up in VMware Player. Just a little pro tip for you. If you're using VMware, click on the Player dropdown in the top left, select Manage, and then Install VMware Tools. This adds very useful functionality that lets you drag and drop files from your main PC into the virtual machine. This way you can build your driver and just drag it into your virtual machine to test it. Pretty cool. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is driver signing. For obvious security reasons, Windows doesn't just let you run drivers whenever you want. The drivers that are currently running on your computer have been digitally signed by Microsoft, which costs money. To test your drivers, you can enable driver test signing on Windows, which will let you load unsigned drivers. But most anti-cheats won't even let you boot the game up if you have test signing on. You can either pay to get your driver signed, or you can manually map the driver for free with a tool like KD Mapper. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe. As always, shout out to the following patrons, you guys are awesome. Look forward to a full driver tutorial in the future and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.